Hello, and welcome to another episode of Diversity, Inclusion, Compassion, and Kindness in Comics. We have a great matchup today. We have the new classic, Iceman number six, and it will be going up against what I am told is a pre-SJW Marvel classic. This one is called The Watchman, and uh, I heard this is a classic that came recommended by a, a, somebody called Norin Rad sent me and told me that if I'm doing a classic, it should go up against a classic. And I am very excited to do today's video because this story is about Bobby coming out. Oh, I have visitors. Sasha and Malia are here. You guys want to do a dance party with me? Yeah. Come on, girl. Sasha Malia dancing? My name is Julie. Okay. What do you want? Well, Mom says to keep it down. Ma okay. But do you guys want to dance a little bit? Yeah. All right. Um, later on, do you want to spend some time with me? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get kidding. Okay, well, they kind of bummed me out, actually, a little bit. They're just, they are teasing me. They actually really love me a lot. So, we are, I am so excited. Let me just, get, let me just brush that off, because I didn't need to have those two. They're adorable, but they, you know, sometimes they uh, test me. And I'm not going to keep it down today. I'm not going to keep it. It's down today. I'm not going to keep it down today. I'm in such a good mood. This comic put me in the best mood in the world. This comic... Uh, I have problems with it already. But listen, this one was so much fun. It is a new classic. This one I'm told... Listen, I got into comics... Uh, right about the time that Iron Man 3 came out. And when I saw that, I said, what is going on here? I, li I really like this world, and uh, I wanted to get more involved in it. So I just started, I was already kind of an expert on music and movies, but uh, I just immersed myself in comics, and just in the last few years, I really just became a, uh, I would say, an expert on it. I know pretty much everything about comics, and um, I, I decided this is, you know, this is, a, and I, I've been started watching other reviewers, and I, and I was kind of appalled at the attitude of a lot of people. And a lot of the people were saying the new stuff is uh, terrible, but I've had just the, uh, the opposite experience, and I just wanted to, to let everyone know. I want to let the world know. So let's see. You know how we do this. I am the judge. This is going to be a fair contest. This is uh, Watchman vs. Iceman, and uh, okay, I already showed my bias. Let's do Watchman first. I am biased, I have to say. This one was just like a party in a com. Can you can you cram a party into a comic book? Because they did, they did. Now, this one was like cramming, um, I don't know, Valium into a corpse, maybe. You, this is the perfect cover for pre-SJW Marvel. It's toxic. It's, it's, this is the sign for uh, like a hazardous. It's like that. Uh, it's, it's toxic. This is keep away. But I was told this is a classic. This is supposed to be something fantastic. And, uh, and then uh, who was this one by? They don't even, they didn't even put their name on it. Oh, it's Alvin Moore. And, uh, the same, oh, oh my God. Am I being trolled right now? This is the same psychopath that did the, uh, the Joker comic that was just a nightmare, the, a living nightmare. I think uh, Norrin Rad trolled me and got me to do another Alvin Moore comic book because, although this one, to be honest with you, is uh, it's not quite as horrific as the uh, Killing Joker. Um, this is, uh, let's, let's, I, I'm not familiar with this storyline, but uh, or any of these characters, to be honest with you. So I jumped in, and uh, 
Alan Moore. How could, how could somebody with the name Moore, you know, we have such a famous Moore with Mike. Why won't you, even my camera doesn't want to focus on it and it's crap. Uh, we have such a great person named Michael Moore. And then we have this psycho who's probably like his evil right wing brother. Uh, oh, Alan, not Alvin. Uh, Alan Moore. He's like uh, some sort of right winger, I guess. Uh, he uh, he has a crippled mind or something. But uh, let's go. Ahead, let's get started on it. So it's like this guy and this kid, and the kid's always reading the comic books at his stand, and he reads a pirate story that's kind of creepy. And then uh, the guy's getting worried because uh, it's the mid '80s. Actually, this actually was written in the '80s too. It said 1986 over here. So the time, you know, that was when Nicole, I'm old enough, listen, I'm way too old to be reading comic books, let's put it that way, but I remember the Cold War, okay, and uh, this was like the time when everybody thought Russia was going to nuke us, so, and we were going to nuke Russia, so he, the old man is worried, and he runs a newsstand, so every day it's just more bad news, he gets to see it. So then we got this thing here, and this woman, uh, She's, uh, she's dating this blue guy, and then the blue guy, can, apparently one of his powers is to make himself into many different people so he could do different things at once. Like he's, So he sends two guys of himself to go have sex with her, and then meanwhile he's working on a chemistry experiment or something. And she's like, uh, she did not dig this, but I know a lot of people that probably would, but uh, she was not into the menage a trois with her uh, boyfriend while he's doing chemistry. She was actually kind of pissed. She's like, you can't even like, you know, just, uh, you know, l l get it on with me without a, uh... and then she throws something at him. It goes right through him. He, I guess he has a lot. He has like tons and tons of power, that guy. Uh, his name is uh, Mr. New York or something. I got to check that out. Hold on. I only read it once. Anyway, so he's a, uh, he, uh, she runs out. She's pissed that he did the old, I'm going to work on my chemistry set while, uh, while I send my doubles in to have sex with you. So she goes to run in to an old friend and it turns out that, uh, the old friend, you know, he's this like, uh, chubby guy. He's getting out of shape. He's middle-aged. Oh, <laughs> I think I can relate to him. Um, so, uh, she's, you know, she's like, I don't, I left this guy. He's, he's a creep. He, she's like, I left John. Oh, his name is John, Dr. John, and uh, she's like, I left him, he was creepy, and she didn't really get into it, but uh, here he is, look at this creep, he is a creep, he's playing with a bra, so uh, he's getting dressed, he has a big television interview coming up, so she's visiting this old guy who's, uh, she was a superhero, and that, and the chubby old guy was a superhero, uh, and they get into, and she's uh, spending the day with him while, the, while the, her boyfriend is going to... Uh, the news station to do a big interview. And uh, while her and her friend, he's going to do the interview and then the the guy and the girl are walking and then they, um, some muggers come out. And even though they're both retired superheroes, they kind of remembered what they were in, and they kicked the crap out of these guys. So that's what's going on with them. And then at the same exact time, the, uh, guy here we have uh the blue guy is getting interviewed on a news station he's getting like an ambush they ambushed him and they're like listen you're the superhero but you know what everybody that you've ever met uh has gotten cancer from being around you and he's like what and then he's like janie was his old girlfriend he's like janie has cancer i wasn't told and then they're like no more that's it and he's just like so anyway at the exact same time it's, they do a little story going on. So they beat up these guys. And they're like out of breath because they haven't been fighting. No one needs the old superheroes anymore because there's this guy, uh, you know, the doctor, um, Christ Almighty, what is his name? Moloch or something. No, Mr. New York. So anyway, uh, she's like, I'm going to go home. He, he, he freaks out and makes the entire studio of news people disappear, which is wild. And then she's like, I'm going to go home. And then he's going to visit his old friend. And he runs into his old friend and he's like, um, hey, oh, there he goes. I was watching the news. Dr. Manhattan, that's his name. Dr. Manhattan was just on the news and they were crucifying the poor guy. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, they were telling him everybody you ever met got cancer. And he's like, oh, no. And then uh, 
And then the, uh, the guy, uh, it says, Dr. Manhattan has left. He disappeared. No one could find him. And now everybody's starting to get worried because, um, because the uh, world... What the hell's going on? Oh, yeah, they think everybody's going to uh, attack the U.S. now that this super guy, Dr. Manhattan, is gone. And he's like, he's starting to feel really bad because his power was killing everybody he knows. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of cool. It's a cool story. But um, then this guy, uh, he's reading his comic book. It's all, over, it's all over the place. Who could follow this? So they're taking her uh, bra and putting it in the check for radiation. She thinks maybe I have cancer. I've been sleeping with this creep. He's been making doubles of himself. So then... Uh, the other one superhero goes and visits the other guy and he says, hey, guess what? Dr. Manhattan left Earth. That means uh, a lot of trouble is going to start up. And then he was right because I guess the Russians were kind of, you know, not afraid to do anything and anything too bad while Dr. Manhattan was around. But then they invade Afghanistan and then they're starting to do the world, or the, the scenarios. There's a bunch of invasions. Everything's going to hell. There's going to be a nuclear war. This guy's bummed out. I've been killing everybody. He went to Mars. So he's sitting on Mars. And then, um, or the moon or somewhere. And then he's just alone. He's really upset. He didn't want, so, is this a classic? I mean, is this what passes for, I mean, this was not the, uh, the blood, gore, and rape fest that uh, Alvin Moore is usually known for. But I mean, it was a good story, I guess. I guess it's okay. It's not as toxic as it, but uh, who needs it? I need a little fun. Do you know what I mean? I need a little fun. I need a little Iceman who is coming out. This is what's happening. Okay. Now, this might be the best comic book I ever read because it's a... Uh, it's got it all. It, it reads like a, like a fun, snappy... I mean, it couldn't be more opposite. This is like a, a funeral dirge, and this one is like a pop song. It's so fun. It's so snappy, even in the face of, of a bad situation. They're friends eyed, and uh, they're still having like snappy banter, and it's snappy and fun. And this guy's like, hey, I'm out and I'm proud, you know? Oh, it, let me go to the back, because this was kind of cool. It shows because... Bobby is Iceman, and he spent, you know, many decades not as a gay guy. And it shows, there's a little at the end, there's a little two-page story of how he found out he was gay. Because apparently, like, he dated tons of girls and everything. He even dated one of the girls, or was in love with one of the girls in, in the beginning of the book. So, he's uh, telling the story of uh, how he became part of the champions with Black Widow who died. And that's the stories about her funeral. And this is Angel and Iceman and Hercules. And uh, they're like, uh, she's, he's telling a story about how his teenage self showed up, a time travel teen version of me came and he said, hey, guess what? I'm gay. And then he was like, but you know, I'm not gay. And then he's like, oh my God, I am gay. And it's like, um... Imagine that, like, I, I spent my whole life as, like, a straight guy, and I couldn't imagine if all of a sudden, like, uh, you know, a 15-year-old me came in and goes, uh, you know, hey, uh, hey, pal, guess what? I was like, what? And he's like, uh, you're gay now. I'd be like, what, I am? But I guess I am. You told me. So I guess what well, he was just like, I didn't realize I was gay, but you told me I was gay. So now he's like, that's it, baby. I'm, he's jumping in with both feet, and he's going for it, and I love that about him because he's just, uh, He's like, someone told him he was gay, and he's like, I'm gay, and I like it. So he's pissed off. He goes back to their old headquarters. The Black Widow died in a Secret Empire. That was a fantastic storyline. Catch that one. Another reason we're in the Golden Age. I hate the detractors and the naysayers, but we are in the Golden Age of comics. So this guy, he's like, hey, guess what? This is an Iceman. He's like... Uh, our old headquarters is a fitness studio, and I hate it. And uh, he's like, oh, let's all go out for drinks. So they go to a bar, and uh, they're having fun. They're reminiscing about how they met the Black Widow. And then uh, that's Ghost Rider, and he doesn't remember. 
And then all of a sudden this one comes in and her name is Dark Star and she was uh, part of the uh, champions too. Or, uh, was it the defenders? No, the champions. And then they're like, um, they're like, yeah, this is uh, this really a bummer, you know? Like we're all sad that Natasha died. And then uh, Angel and uh, Bobby are hanging out in Hollywood. How awesome is that? And they're both, you know, pretty much saying how much they're bummed out. And then they're looking off the Hollywood Hills, and uh, uh, somebody sees, I guess, uh, an angel sees something, uh, or uh, maybe Bobby sees something. They see something in a backyard, and they're like, I don't like what I see. And they're right. It's this chick, and she's making a, a, a statue of a sentinel. And if you guys don't know what a sentinel is, they are the things that kill X-Men and mutants. So these two guys are mutants, and they're like, hey, lady, or... Um, uh, we need to talk about the Sentinel in the room. That's what I mean about the banter. It's just so funny the way they talk. It's like a sitcom. And uh, she's like, talk about the Sentinel in the room. And uh, yeah, that thing you're making is, is, is an instrument of hate. And she's like, it's not. It's a movie prop. I'm an artist. I make art for movies. And they're like, I don't care. And that's just what it is. If it's offensive, it's got to go. I totally agree. It's like, I don't, it doesn't matter what your purpose was or what you want. And she's like, this was my best sculpture. And this guy just ruined it. He came flying out of the sky and just wrecked it. And she's like, flipping X-Men, where the hell did they come from? I, I mean, I can relate to her because I would, you know. But it's like, no, there's no excuse. If it's offensive to anyone anywhere, never do it. That's the rule. Don't do it. Okay, lady, lesson learned, right? No, you'll find out, no. But anyway... So he's hanging out, he's texting people, he goes to a bookstore to find out like how to be gay because he just found out he was gay. He didn't know. It was like a teenager came and told him I'm gay. So he's reading this book called Born This Gay and he's waiting online. There's a big line for sneakers. He's going to buy sneakers. And this guy Judah comes up to him and is like, hey, you know, um, if you really want to find out how to be gay, hang out with me, I'm gay. And then it's like, they kind of hit it off. And he's like, um, he's like, um, yeah. He doesn't know what to do. He's confused because he's never been gay before. And he's like, hey, I got an idea. Let's go to uh, let's go to a bar tonight and I'll show you what it's like to be gay. And he's like, well, I got a crew of uh, friends. Uh, can they come too? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, well, let me call them. So he calls Angel, who's getting his wings massaged. And then this one's at a museum. And this one is fixing a car. And this one's punching rocks. And he's like, yeah, they're all going to come. And he's like, great. So then the lady, they wrecked her statue. She's like, I'm so mad that they wrecked the statue that you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just make real sentinels and, uh, and uh, kill those guys. And I didn't, I didn't realize it was that easy to make a sentinel, though. Like, all of a sudden, she's like, you know what? Instead of making a fake one, let's make a real one. I mean, I guess she should be mad, but I mean, to then start building real sentinels uh, is a little bit much. But okay. So then he's at the gay bar with his friends, and uh, he's got Hercules there. And uh, let me tell you about Hercules. Um, he'd be a big hit in a gay bar. I lived in Astoria, Queens, for a while, and uh, the Greeks over there. You know what they say about um, uh, you know you know how they separate the men from the boys in Greece with a crowbar. That's a joke. That's a joke. But anyway, he would be a big hit there. But anyway, he meets this guy and he's like, oh my God, you know, like my friends are having drinks and he's like, let's dance. And he's dancing and they're like getting it on and they're getting so gay. And uh, he's like, are you ready? Ready for what? And he's like, first K kiss. And Bobby's like, I love it. But you know what? I've always been kissing girls because I've never been attracted to guys before. But I got, can't get used to the stubble. And then like, who's over in the corner? Giving him a cheers, Herc. He's like, I've seen that before, pal. I'm from Greece. Uh, go for it. So uh, they split. They go out and they're like, let's uh, let's go back to my place. I mean, these guys. Uh, he's not kidding around, Bobby. He's in in for a penny, in for a pound, as I say. So uh, or in for a pounding. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Uh, so they go outside, and that chick this afternoon, she. Uh, when she got mad at them, she built one, two, three, four, four. She, bought, she built five working sentinels and then after six, sorry. And then she had them attack Bobby. And she's like filming it on her phone. And she's like, yeah. And then he's like, 
holy crap, this chick was, uh, we pissed her off and she made a bunch of sentinels. And uh, he's like, we have to, uh, I need some friends to help me take on this many sentinels. And he yells, this is so funny. He yells, champions assemble. So they all come out here and uh, all the champions come out to help. And then he's like, wait a minute, that's the, what the Avengers say. And he's like, champions emerge. Uh, champions fight things. Uh, we really need to work on our catchphrase. And that's the way it ends, to be continued. And I'll, I will be here for issue seven because I want to see uh, them take on these settles that that lady built. And uh, I think this is such a great comic book on every level. The story makes sense. Everything makes sense. But also it's like, hey, uh, it, it's it's like, hey, let, let's give something to the gays. The gays need a little something. You know, I listen, I was doing some, I put on a ton of weight this year since Hillary took over. And uh, I'm, oh my God, oh my God, Freudian slip. Since Hillary lost, I've been bummed. I still can't even be, I can't even, I guess even subconsciously, I can't even say it. But yes, yeah, since Hillary lost, I've been just so bummed that I put on a ton of weight. So um, the other day I'm walking around, I'm in Roslyn, which is a nice neighborhood. I'm in, this is where my, my, brother and, uh, my brother-in-law and sister live in Roslyn. That's where I'm staying. It's a nice neighborhood. I'm walking around and I thought, I can't run right now because I'm like 70 pounds overweight. I'll smash my knees to hell. So I'm like, uh, I'm going to do the power walking. And I, if you ever look at power walking, it is kind of a, you, the emotion is kind of a, effeminate. It is a sissy looking thing. And uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a manly kind of man, but um, I was doing the power walk and I was like, all right, let's do it. I don't want to do that. I want to have low impact. I'll do it by maybe 15 minutes. I, I, go, I go walking for what? For uh, two blocks, maybe. And a car full of teenagers calls me a homo. And it ruined my day. And I was like, oh my God, is this what like the, is this what they have to go through? That kind of harassment. They're like, you know, uh, you know, I didn't like it. I didn't like to be called a homo, you know. So um I I, I totally feel for Iceman and what he's going for. I don't feel that much for Watchman. And uh I know they were trying to do something spectacular. And I know that people are going to be mad. And I know this is actually a perfect copy. This one actually feels newer than this one. And uh, it, I don't hate this one. Normally, I, I just really don't like them. And I don't mind shredding it. But it's a sleeping pill. It's, it's, it, it has nothing to it. It has nothing to it. I hope Michael Moore talks to his uh, brother, Alvin, and... Uh, really straightens him out because this guy's got a bit of a twist. He's either a super psychotic or super sleepy. So I am sorry to anybody who's mad about this, but uh, this one is going in the shredder. Da, 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 da. Sorry. I didn't hate you enough to shred you, but we kind of have a thing going here. But I did love this one, and... I think this time around, I am gonna do it like you never knew it. Subscribe oh, to me now, and hit the notification bell, and check me out on Twitter. Come out and subscribe to me.